next speaker has a pharmaceutical degree from University of Bergen and is now doing a PhD in genetics, personality psychology, and evolutionary psychology at the University of Oslo. <clears throat> he has always been obsessed with why things exist at all, an interest that keeps leading him to Darwin and modern evolutionary psychology. A very particular obsession of his is why humans have different personality and the evolutionary forces that might or might not be able to explain why human differences persist over time. This is what he's going to share with us today in his talk, Evolution of Personality, Why Are People Different? Please welcome Thomas Kettoska. In the beginning, uh, the universe was not very complicated. Uh, not until life evolved. So if, if we map the history of the universe onto a calendar year, life evolved in September. And uh, humans, modern humans, evolved around 11.56 p.m. on the 31st of December. <laughs> so this wonderful illustration uh, is all life. So currently living things are along the edges. And uh, the origin of life, life is down in the middle. And uh, lots of extinct species inside of it. A key part of this evolutionary process has always been variation. So uh, evolution reduces variance over time. And that, that's why Richard Dawkins have called genes uh, immortal quilts, because genes can potentially last forever. You know, it's the only thing about life that actually lasts a long time throughout history. And this insight has led evolutionary psychologists to understand our universal human nature, such as our ability to learn a language, uh, how we choose mates, and our visual adaptations. So we all have two eyes. We don't vary in the numbers of eyes we have, like these guys. We, um, we're all the same in that manner. So why is that not true for personality? Why, we, have, we are obviously different. So in, in behavioral genetics, we try to understand the causes of our differences. To what degree can environments and genes explain why we are different. So there is a law in behavioral genetics that goes like this. All traits are heritable. So heritable means that there is some variation in a complex trait in humans, and some of that variation is due to difference, differences in genes that people have. So why the Evolution reduces variance, as I said, but why do these genes involved in personality persist? Well, one possibility is that it doesn't matter for evolution what personality you have. Are you very introverted, for example? Well, evolution says who cares? Uh, it doesn't matter for you know, how many children you have, for example. But this view is almost certainly wrong, because uh, we know that personality is related to things such as the numbers of sexual partners you have during your lifetime, uh, your health, uh, and things like that. So another popular view of personality, and many people find this intuitive, is balancing selection. So th there's always these set points and compromises in evolution. So some people might use their energy in mating, some people use it in uh, parenting, and the best example we have of balancing selection in humans is uh, of the maintenance of the two sexes. So imagine that more females are born in a population that leaves fewer males, and therefore more males will be able to court and maintain mates over time, and hence being male is a more adaptive strategy. So the pendulum is constantly shifting between the sexes. So this is a new, uh, this is a view of uh, a painting uh, where there's perhaps very extroverted people uh, having lots of uh, weird sexual uh, experiments. And that has costs. So that strategy might not always be uh, useful, but there's problems with this view. Genes, no, traits under balancing selection typically are controlled by very few genes. So when it comes to sex, for example, it's controlled by one SRI gene, which uh, engages all of the biological adaptations that's relevant to sex. 
So this is another law. Human traits are associated with many genetic variants that individually accounts for very small percentages of the behavioral variation. So when people try to find the genes that can account for heritability, they often don't find them, perhaps because there's so few of them and they have very small effect sizes. So we need another evolutionary process called mutation selection balance. So evolution makes errors all the time. In fact, many of these mutations are so harmful that they are immediately removed from the population, if you die early, for example. But most mutations are only mildly disadvantageous to how we function. That's why most of us uh, most of us have around 500 mutations on average, and these mutations reduces how we function, makes us a little bit less athletic, a little bit less bright, for example. And by the way, <laughs> these mutations come from uh, males, mostly. From your dad, your grandfather, your grand 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 grandfather, because sperm production is so vast that the chances of anything going wrong increases. <coughs> So all over the world, people choose mates that have traits that signal slow mutational load, such as intelligence and the symmetrical bodies and things like that. But people also are interested in kindness, emotional stability and generosity and things like that, which is personality. Which, so Plato had a very interesting solution to the problem of universals in philosophy. What is the relationship between things in the world? between abstract things and particular things. And he had this idea that there is a mind-independent reality of, with forms that everything on Earth deviates from. So if personality is purely under mutation selection balance, that means that there is some perfect personality that none of us have, because we all have a mutation loop. But this still has to exist somehow if evolution selects for it. So if that sounds like a crackpot uh, weird idea to you, it's because it is, and the universe is very strange. Um, so I'm pretty sure Philip Larkin did not think of evolutionary personality genetics when he wrote this poem. <laughs> but here we go. They fuck you up, your mom and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults they have, and add some extra just for you. Um, <laughs> and, oh my god. Um, <laughs> But they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old style hats and coats who half the time were soppy stern and half at one another's throats. Thank you for your attention.